This video is just for fun. I did a video a couple weeks ago on how to sound smart. And one of the things that came up is pronouncing words correctly. I looked to see what are the most commonly mispronounced English words. And I thought I would read them on screen to see if I'm doing them right. You ready? Let's do this together. The first word is mischievous. I don't know if I'm saying that right. We're gonna correct it. Here's the word. Totally doing this wrong. You're supposed to say mischievous. So I've been mispronouncing and adding a syllable to mischievous when it's mischievous. Whoops, this is not going to go well. Next word. I don't know. Jif is a gif. Is it jif? Okay, according to Google, it's jif. It's jif like the peanut butter. Hmm. The next word is February. <laughs> February? Don't say February. Do say February. Feb February. Cool, been mispronouncing that month. Thank God that's not my birthday month. February. Okay, I should know this one. The word is jewelry. Jewelry, right? Don't say jewelry. Do say jewelry. Woo! I got one right. This is two syllables. It looks like it's three. Jewelry is correct. Jewelry is not. Okay, the next word is nuclear. Don't say nuclear. I didn't. Woo! I got this one right. Do say nuclear. Okay, last one. <laughs> the word is ophthalmologist. Nope, I'm saying this one very wrong. Oh, ophthalmologist. But there's a P. Oh, a PH. I'm so sorry to every ophthalmologist I've ever been to because I've been calling you ophthalmologist when it is ophthalmologist. All these commonly mispronounced words, be sure to go check out our blog post so you can see if you're saying them all correctly or not. I was pretty horrified and shocked by how many words I was saying incorrectly. If you have any more ideas for words that I should test myself on, put them below and I will check them out. This is some powerful science. Okay, are you ready for this? This comes straight out of the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology and it blew my mind. Are you ready? Was that a good enough uh, intro, exciting dopamine, really intro to the science? I'm telling you, it was crazy. Okay. They wanted to know if the words we use could change behavior. They wanted to know if the first 10 words that someone read in directions could change the way they behaved in a task. So they did something very, very small. They took the directions on a little task and they swapped out just a couple of the words in those directions. So they added into the directions what are called achievement-oriented words. These are words like win, succeed, master, achieve, race. They added just a couple of words into the first few words of those directions. They wanted to know, could adding some achievement-oriented words change people's behavior in the task? They found that when participants had just a couple of these achievement-oriented words in the directions, their activity on the task improved. So just reading words like win makes you more successful in your task. That's not where it gets more interesting. Not only did it affect the participants' behavior, it actually doubled their desire to keep working on tasks. Remember how we talked about dopamine is the key to motivation. It's the key to getting people to reply to your emails. It's the key to people getting to reply to your chat. It's the key to people getting to show up. It's the key to making people make sure people inter are interested in you. And that's because dopamine is, mo is a motivator. So what these researchers found is that when they just use motivational words like win, like succeed, like master, it actually created, it gifted more motivation to those participants. This is a gift. This means that we have the power to change an entire interaction and subsequently our influence with one word change. That if we use our words more purposefully, if we wake up our words and we add just a couple of more dopamine sparking words, we actually gift people more motivation. What a gift we can give to our colleagues. I hope you'll see that today's training it's not just about our benefit. It's not just about increasing our influence. It's actually using our influence to help others feel more motivated, feel more engaged, to do better on their tasks. So when they switched out these words, their performance increased and it doubled their participants' desire. Even reading words like win stimulates our testosterone and our dopamine. The first 10 words you use matter. The problem is we tend to stick to the same old boring words, right? How often do I get an email or a chat 
we should grab coffee, or my least favorite phrase in the world, can I pick your brain, or here are my slides, let's do that review, let's do a check-in, let's do that meeting. All of those words, our brain stays asleep. Or how are ya, let's do lunch. What if we tried to swap out some of our words so they were just a little bit more exciting. Instead of asking people to grab a coffee, ask them to grab a waffle or grab a taco. Instead of saying, here are my slides or here's the overview, can we say, I wanna tell you some fascinating stories. Instead of saying, how are you? Can we say, what's the highlight of your day? Instead of saying, let's get started, let's say, I've been looking forward to this. Instead of let's do lunch or I'm gonna pick your brain, let's hike, let's walk and talk, let's do some pottery. Any of those alternates are slowly waking up your words to signal to people, I'm worth listening to. I want to gift you dopamine to help you get motivated and help make it easier for us to listen.